Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. This is another segment from the casual dinner hosted here at uh, Kyle's uh, Waters Creek, uh, Allen, Plano, uh, Dallas area show that was so successful. Had a great time, 25, 26 uh, podcasters, YouTubers, um, content uh, creators in attendance. Uh, thanks sponsors. They were not invited this time, but they, they will be at some point in the future. The top Spinini and Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Hugs and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, Compsy.com, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So uh, this uh, one of the questions that we dealt with uh, uh, had to do with the kind of motivation and uh, consistency in uh, providing this content. So here it is, uh, kind of went around. It was, uh, we jumped around. Uh, you might recognize some voices, uh, but uh, again, uh, 25 people and most of them were heard at one point. So again, I had a great time. Hope you did too. Jay, set the table. Struggles to create content. Yeah. What, are you, what is your dilemma or how would you want us to weigh in on this? I want to know that some other people go through what I go through with content. Some days you don't feel like making videos or you just have other things going on. How do you guys find a balance in this hobby? Being a collector, doing it as a business, trying to do the videos, the podcast. And I only do one podcast episode a week to keep it balanced. It's like I gotta get a guest and I gotta do this and I wanna do other things. I have some ideas I wanna put forward. So I always feel like if you have to ask the question, it's so you can listen. So I wanna hear everybody else. Good. You need to remember that we're teachers. We're sharing information for other people to learn about. And Yes, it's a struggle to get up every morning, it's a struggle to turn on the YouTube, and it's a struggle to make sure you're clear-headed, but at the end of the day, when you remember that you know, you're teaching people, and they're learning, and you get that affirmation back, for me, that's what does it, if it's that in the morning. Jay, are you getting encouragement from other podcasters or other YouTubers to press on? Yeah, 100%. The show goes on. <laughs> but... Uh... I think structure and format helps, man. I think uh, for me, it's a balance, man. I still got friends. I'm, I'm 26. I still got a life ahead of me. I'm just taking it one day at a time. I think it's okay to take a break, too. If you got to take a pause, I think that's yeah. healthy. There's no rule that says, I come out every Friday, but I've missed a few Fridays here and there. I don't think that's uh, wrong to do. So if, if you need to do that. I'm the definition of struggle. I haven't produce any sort of solid content in a while now. In fact, my last blog post, I think, was March. I just haven't felt the the urge to have an argument online lately. But uh, I finally started this morning having more arguments online. If you know me, you'll figure that out. But uh, being a part of the early days of About the Cards, I was going to sit in a, in a few episodes instead of him, and I just I can't be consistent, and I feel that hurts the podcast, so hence the figurehead, and I will take my back seat. <laughs> Real quick to add to Brent? that. I started my station, I think, March or April 2020, and then yesterday I just passed over uh, 15K on my YouTube station, and it was a lot of work. But what's helped me the most is I've spent so much time learning how to create content and actually creating less, and actually trying to improve it every single time. I had a background in hosting and modeling, but also in learning how to storytell and structure YouTube videos. Whatever your platform is, it may be better to relate to the audience if you do less content, but learn how to craft it and get better every time, because that's just worked for me. I'm all about less is more, quality over quantity, and just improving one video at a time. I will say alongside that, as far as the consistency goes, we try to be extremely consistent because I think one of the most important parts about consistency is that people tune in to hear from you. They're expecting to hear from you. They're wanting to hear from you. They're giving you their time out of their day, out of their schedule to tune into what you're doing. I completely understand needing breaks. That's absolutely natural as a human. We get burnt out. But to me, the way I've always looked at content is if the audience member is willing to give you a moment of their time, you should respect it and try to give them a consistent schedule where they know they're going to be having something within their hand or on their YouTube schedule or a notification saying, hey, the new episode is out, or hey, the, the top five is up. But it's that consistency where they know that they can rely on you because they give you their time. That's just where I come at with the viewpoint of consistency. And real quick, consistency could be once a week, once every two weeks, right. whatever it is. Right? It's whatever works for you. Yeah. And I'll batch too. I'll do three or four videos and know I'm good and be like, all right, this will be out. And I can just answer comments or I can just take a break and, and just chill out for a moment, but at least I have the next couple weeks taken care of. If without batching, I'd be lost. I'd like to share something on the micromanagement piece of, of content production. And uh, we think about like scheduling and things, but there's also this other piece of it. I carry around a notepad app on my phone, and whenever I think an idea, I just plug it in. 
because I can't remember everything. Then I go back and I scrub the content. I have stuff dating back from you know 2012 that I thought about that I haven't blogged about yet or whatever. And I might figure out the right place to put it. Is it a blog? Is it a podcast? Is it a video? And over the course of a couple of weeks, I might have enough content to create 10, 20 minutes of solid dialogue. And if I can't get a, a host on, it's usually just me anyway. You can just produce it on your phone using one of the apps on your phone and a voice memo and dump it onto your desktop and get it going. It, it, you know, try to think less about, like he was saying, quality over quantity, but at the same time, don't group think your, your content. Just realize nothing is ever perfect, but that's the beauty of it. If you, you can break a, all of us here when you're producing content, you should think, am I either entertaining someone or educating someone? At the core of it, every, one of, every piece of content we put out, am I doing one of those two things, or hopefully both? Yeah. I try to be both self-deprecating and be educational at the same time. If you're passionate about this hobby, it's gonna come across. I mean, that if you're not evoking that in someone else, are you doing it right? Entertain, educate, right? That's, think of all the channels you love to watch or listen to. They have one of those components, right? Not everybody will entertain or educate everyone else. So you're not gonna like everybody. That's part of it too, is accept that not some people aren't gonna like what you did. I'm, I'm struck that about half the podcasters in this room are like sole proprietors. They do it themselves. The other half are part of a team where they have co-host or something. Is it mainly you? Oh, because yeah. I'm just saying half the people in here, I think probably really delight in having a teammate. Yeah, that's, I gotta talk about that actually, that's important. Well, I think the first style show, what I learned is one man army is pretty tough. Even as a card shop and everything, I had to sacrifice and swallow that pillow of pride. That's when I got, Mike and I knew each other for 10 years and he's edited and helped me so much. I know at Mojo Sports, we got a team that we're ready to form and I've talked to people that I can honestly trust. I had to swallow that pride, man. It just took a little maturing and, and some time and actually like learning from other people. I really appreciate your guys' suggestions because it helps a lot. Awesome, thank you. I wanted to add, if you're looking for inspiration, First off, my background, I was in Hollywood for a decade, uh, behind the scenes working with stuff. But the writers are always taught, like, one, you write no matter what, even if you're not inspired. So I think that's the first step, especially in the YouTube world, where it's, oh, anyone can do it, but sometimes we don't feel inspired. So three pages a day is what a writer is supposed to write, you know, whether they're inspired or not in screen. So applying that mentality and saying, look, I'm going to work on it every day. But some one place where I find incredible inspiration when I'm not feeling it is in my metrics. I look back and I say, wait, what was popular? What did drive good engagement? What had a lot of comments? And maybe I never actually responded to all 20 of those comments or all 20 of those replies. There's a reply I didn't respond to, and I know this is popular. That'll inspire the next thing. It's really good to look at your metrics. Sometimes we're coasting, we're doing good, but if we ever hit a wall and we're like, what should I be talking about? Metrics can help with that. Yeah, alongside that, if there's something that you do that works, roll with that. Learn how to take that and branch that into other aspects as well. You do a particular IGTV episode and it does really well. Look and see what people are responding to, what they're latching on to, and take that and see, okay, what can the olive branch do now? I came also from Hollywood. I was a writer, I was an actor, I directed, I produced. So I'm coming at it from a very different angle than what some of you guys have come at it with, which is perfectly fine. Everybody should have different angles. But I also think we should all try to be brave and bold. There are a lot of things that we can be doing that I think can be out of the box. And that to me is exciting. And I think that to the community is also exciting. What can you be doing in the context of the sports card world that is groundbreaking? That's exciting to people because that in itself will translate into growth and, and broadening of the hobby. I think that's what we're all here for anyway, is the growth of the hobby. So that's where I'm coming at. Just, you can be bold, you can be brave, try something new. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you tried it. But just to piggyback real quick, I remember taking a commercial acting workshop in LA and the casting director, the one that uh, held the workshop, he said, look, whatever you do, when you go in for that commercial audition, as long as you don't play it safe, you need to be 100% you because either you land it or you don't, but at least they know you're the guy or not. If you play it safe, you're, you can't be vanilla. So whatever you are, whoever you are, whatever you bring, go in on it and not everyone will like it, but your people will love you. And the other thing to add to the education and entertain is also heard inspire. So if you do all three, you're irreplaceable. So if you think of Gary V, whether you like him or not, he entertains, he educates, and he inspires, and that's why people are 
drawn to it. I always try to think what can I incorporate of entertain, educate, and then hopefully inspire to take action in the, the card hobby or just to watch the next video. I want to throw something on the wall. As I look around this room, I know pretty much all of you and what you do and, and where you fall. Some are more collector based. Some are more investor, and you do a lot of things to make money in the hobby, and there's nothing wrong with that one way or the other, whether I disagree with you or not. But are you spreading yourself too thin? And I guess I feel like some of the ones that have spoken up and have had more of the issues with struggles and that this is what we've done, are you all spreading yourself too thin <coughs> by having a YouTube channel, by having a blog, by doing six other things? Maybe if you took one of those away, you're not spreading your inspiration or your topics so thin and you maybe just get it a little more reeled in and it makes it easier. I don't feel some of the uh, ones that are as concerned about that are the more collector based people. In this case, I'm not judging anyone, but I think it's a little bit easier, but those people that are the collector based tend to maybe only have their one medium that they're on. And then others have a website, a YouTube page, other website interests and things like that. So I wonder if that kind of causes some of that lack of you know, motivation or whatever, because you're trying to put different stuff out everywhere, but maybe could you just condense it just a little bit? There's a reality we all face as content creators is, look, I'm a thousand videos into my YouTube career. I'm, you're not coming up with new ideas. As much as you might think you have a new idea, somebody's done it before. What's that? You can always repurpose old stuff. Of course. And no. reapply it. I have this original great idea. I promise you somebody's done it before. Yeah. The point is, that's not the point. They're there to watch you because they have connected with you at some level they want to hear your spin on that, your personal experience with a car. Dave's done videos about a 52 Tops Mano. We all know what a Mano looks like. like. I don't need to see a new Mano. I don't need to see another one. I can see any car I want on eBay anytime. But what he, anyone, not just Dave, but anybody talks about it, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear the connection for you, the stories, the... John, you do a great job of that when you tell stories too. Just put something personal with it and people are going to connect with that. That You want that personal connection. Love it or hate it. And that will create, ironically, the, the people that really enjoy your stuff and the people that don't connect with it. And that's fine. That's going to happen no matter what. It's like so, Monday morning, who are you turning to to listen to about the football games? Is it Skip Bayless? Is it Steve May Smith? What anchor or what commentator is the one that you want to get their take on? They're all talking about the same game, but it's their conviction and their personality that makes them special to you and makes you tune in to them versus everyone else. I have the same approach with me. There's always all kinds of hate coming at Beckett because that's at work at Beckett and or you're outdated. I've always tried to take the approach of just to, to connect with my audience on some level. It's not going to be for everybody. It, you just got to learn to uh, let that roll off your shoulder. I mean, it, it might be easier said than done, it. but it's just it's how it is. Jim mentioned earlier, I'm almost to 500 episodes, and that's a whole lot of work. But I have my audience that I connect with. I don't worry about being first in the space of breaking news because of everybody, that's the angle everybody tries. And I just find it doesn't work for me. I just connect with my audience, like I said, and go from there. I have a really fun anecdote on that from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, I worked on a film called Confessions of a Shopaholic, <laughs> which spent $60 million marketing. But who did they market to? They marketed to everybody. It's a good film for everybody. It's funny, it's fun, and the movie flopped. Mm -hmm. And then you look at a horror movie. Horror movies like, we need to sell one million tickets. If we sell one million tickets, that's a $10 million box office opening weekend, or 20 million now, I don't know what inflation is. <laughs> it's 20 million is enough to make our money back on the $2 million film. Mm -hmm. And horror fans go to see horror movies. So do you want to be the rom-com that's trying to get everybody and actually costs a lot more money to try to get people to see it? Or do you just want to be, this is me, I'm this card collector, I'm this personality, I'm investment focused, I'm collecting focused. I think there's so much more power to being in your lane and not worrying about the fact that there's a show that is the exact opposite of you. And people watch that too.